We are back. Welcome back to the Nick Hall Comedy Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Hall. Joined as always by Josh Griffey. After a uh, uh, a long break, we are back. <laughs> ecstatic Fuck. to be back, by the way. Fucking ecstatic Stoked. to be back. Stoked. Yeah, I got to give you guys a shout out. Uh, obviously, we're doing the the Kent Murphy podcast, and uh, we've had a, a bunch of comments on there, like. You know, I mean, the Kim Murphy podcast is doing well. But we've had a bunch of co- 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 comments on there. That when, when are you and Josh going to do yours? And it's like we we fucking appreciate that, man. So <laughs> Nick we're, we're keeps texting this. me, "Hey, man, get into the bigs, and I can interview you on my other podcast." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're doing this. We're we're aiming for I think a June first to where we can just get back, you know, fully fully back to work in the studio and all that shit. So uh, here we are. Here we are. How uh, how's your quarantine been? Uh, man, dude, it's, I was telling you, it's been hard, man, because my wife's a nurse, so, like, I'm sitting here bitching, like, I'm tired of, like, watching Muppet Babies, right? Like, that's been my (laughs) quarantine disaster, because I've seen every new Muppet Babies a thousand times, and then she comes home, and she's like, two more people died today, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, my bad, like, I'll I'll stop, (laughs) you know? So, it's, it's this weird, and then, you know, oh, (laughs) yeah, seriously, though, Miss Piggy, bitch. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah it's 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 fucking crazy it's like we had that thing where like my kids are sitting outside in the backyard because the weather started to turn yeah finally and like other parents are out playing and some parents are letting their kids play and some of us weren't and it's just like dude this sucks but we had this cra- i don't know if you had this we had this crazy thing where we had like a weekend where all the dads like congregated outside of my fence so i'm in the fence drinking they're drinking and we just start you could tell everyone was pent up dude we just start hashing it out one guy's like, hey, I'm here for the Republican talking points. And like, all right, cool. Let's make fun of that guy <laughs> talking about Michael Jordan, like nonstop. <laughs> but it was so weird because just that small moment of like hanging out with people, you're like, oh, man, I didn't realize like how much yeah. that part was yeah. missing. Yeah, it's uh, I'm lucky because uh, when the quarantine started, because I live by myself. So when the quarantine started, I came up to, to Chucky's house, mm-hmm. Ryan's, and uh, we just as soon as that lockdown happened, we just decided to lock down together and fucking that way we would at least he's a, he owns yeah, a bar right. in real life. So like we've been, uh, we, we did a lot of runs where it was like, we're out of booze, not going to the liquor <laughs> store. We just go to his storage and raid the storage at the bar. And we just come home with bottles and bottles. And he's like, fuck it. I paid for it already. Yeah. His <laughs> accountant comes back and he's like, good God. Yeah. yeah his, uh, I think his order, because they, they opened back up on Monday, and I think his order for liquor was bigger than, like, a normal order because yeah. we've drank in the last two months. <laughs> Haven't you guys been closed for two months? Don't worry about it. Load the trucks. <laughs> Load it up. Oh, man. Well, dude, that's, like, crazy because I've been having that, too. I was telling you, I've fucking, here I have a Tibetan prayer bowl now. I've got, like, fucking sex, sex dust, right? Like, I just get <laughs> drunk on wine doing Dungeon and Dragon Zoom all night. And just yeah. start buying weird shit. It's like my house is just like things just show up, and I'm like, "When the fuck did that happen?" <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's been it's been weird. We uh, the one night we were uh, we had a cookout, and uh, we you know we cooked up some like pork chops or something. And the neighbor lady that lives next door to to Chucky, she's like uh, she's a super nice lady, but she's got three just devil children. Oh, yeah. I mean, they are just, they are just the fucking worst. And like, you can, you can tell, cause like every now and then I'll be outside, like, you know, doing what, just chilling with my dog and they'll be coming out the back door, not knowing that anybody's outside. And she'll be like, you look, you little motherfuckers. <laughs> and then she's like, okay guys, uh, go back, you know, let's go back to lunch. And it's like, it's cool lady. I don't care. So one night, <laughs> one night, I guess her kids were all at their dad's house and, she was out back and we were cooking out. She's like, that smells good. And you could just see it in her eyes. She was just like, please invite me over. Like, give me some normalcy in life. <laughs> so we're like, yeah, come on over and fucking eat dinner with us. And then next thing we know, we're all doing shots of, of whiskey. And it's like two in the morning and we're uh, escorting her home. Like, she's barely making it into the house. And like, she hasn't spoken to us since. <laughs> well, it's like, <laughs> what in, like you walk in, the her, kids but... are all covered in war paint and shit. They've eaten the dog. <laughs> She's like, I don't well, care. Was, I needed this. <laughs> yeah, that was the uh, that was the highlight of our uh, our quarantine so far. It was a, it was a good night, but uh, oh yeah, yeah, man. No, it, it's it's wild though, dude. Cause, like we had the uh, uh, my neighbor actually is a nurse practitioner. She had it, 
And then she was in lockdown for 16 days, felt better, went and, uh, you know, her she was no symptoms anymore, right? Yep. Went back to work and then started getting aches and the fever again. That shit came back. She tested positive still, so she had that shit for over 30 days. Damn. Well, she got cleared, right? Like, she finally got her negative test. And so, you know, my neighbors were all out in the driveway and we were having beers. And she came over and, like, you could just tell. Like, she was locked up, like, could not see her kids for 16 days. And she she just dropped on me. She's like, I don't have any evidence or anything, but this is not a natural virus. And I was like, fuck, yeah, I'm here for this. Let's go. <laughs> I was like, fucking Wuhan monster, baby. I'm here for this. And she's just like, I've had every disease. She's like, something's off with this one. And I was like, anytime someone starts with, I have no evidence. I was like, yeah, that's my sweet spot. Let's do this. Well, it's like, <laughs> well, it's like you and I, like, we love conspiracies. Yeah, love them. Like, that's it's our thing. But then... When Plandemic dropped. Bro, yeah. Plandemic. But it was like the first time that I was like, okay, conspiracies are kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not a fun when conspiracy. When people actually believe them. <laughs> well, no, because like, I, I, that was like my weed out test. I even put a thing on Facebook. I'm like, I'm really proud of everyone I have left on my Facebook. I've already blocked so many <laughs> of you. But like, good job. No one posted this video. Great. Like, I'm happy yeah. for you. Then I go yeah. to Twitter and it's like, boom, boom, boom. Sheeple, well, sheeple. And it's like, oh my. But it's, I don't know. It's like. Just don't be I – like, I like fun conspiracies. Like that one I sent you where it's like the world's been over since 2012. Yeah. They're moving yeah. the Statue of Liberty to the other side of the – like that shit, great. But like pandemic, yeah. come on. Well, it's like the guy's like, the guy's like an ex-con or some shit. Like he, yeah, he, the lady's gotta, a disgraced yeah. scientist. And they're all like, yeah, you should believe him. But I guarantee you like if that was one of Hillary's cronies that just got out of jail, then I'll be like, he went to jail. You can't believe him. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. It's just, it just matters which well, they side just, of the If it was one of Hillary's people, they'd be like, that motherfucker didn't tip at Starbucks <laughs> once. He should go to jail for <laughs> he, knows, he knows about the emails. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. No, this, this has been the greatest. It's like one of those things that I know people are tired of the joke, but you're like, what if Obama had done it? This has been like the greatest stretch for that game of all time. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. fucking absurd. And now, apparently now there's another conspiracy that Obama did done it. So who knows? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've read it all, man. I, I think I saw one the other day. It was like George Bush may have started this. And I'm just like, that was like 2008. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Well, no, because my, my brother's one of these guys. He fully believes that this is a genetic weapon, right? A bio weapon that got loose. And he's like, he thinks China, like the way they covered it. And like, you know, there's all this stuff. We don't know who how many people really had it. We think there's some false reporting. Shocker. Right. Sure. Gover government that doesn't let people talk and like have their own opinion. Shocker. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. What? They're not being totally upfront and honest about the global calamity they cause. But that's yeah. all I said, because my I think it was my neighbors like, you know, come on, come on. And I was like, hey, here's an idea. If they invented a bioweapon, why not drop that shit just next door? <laughs> like, just float <laughs> that shit to Japan or, you know, yeah. Korea. Like, why start it in your own country? So that everyone's in like China virus. Well, that's, that's actually pretty smart, because it's like that thing of like. It it, uh, it helps clear your name. So like when I was a kid, <laughs> no, no, this is true. But like when I was a kid on Halloween, like we would go soaping around the neighborhood, right. but we would always soap my house first and our own houses. Smart. So that way it would be less suspicious that it was us doing it. Holy you know shit. what I mean? Yeah. That's <laughs> you just yeah. walk out in the morning in your little Spider-Man yeah. underwear and you're like, those sons of bitches, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then like it was never thought that it was, you know, that it was me and my friends. <laughs> it's actually a really smart uh, strategy. Oh, my God. That's genius. I never yeah. did that. And we just always got busted. Like we just <laughs> went out knowing you're like, mom's going to be like, where's the 24 rolls of toilet paper the next day? And just be like, all right, I'm taking the L on this. It's worth it. <laughs> like, I'm just going to take yeah. I'm going to take the loss. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I don't. It is smart, though. I mean, I, yeah. I totally believe if you're asking me up front, do I believe that every country is outbreak style breeding biological weapons? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, why not? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not dismissing the conspiracies, I'm not dismissing them totally, because because I mean, there is a part of me. I love that shit. And I'm yes. just like and, and I inherently don't trust the government. Sure. But on either side of the aisle, I don't really give a fuck. And so, like, yeah, it's far fetched, but like, you know, part of me wants to be like, what if it was? Like, that'd be pretty dope at the end of the day, because then we could, you know, uh, we could riot in the streets, and that'd be fun. Yeah. Well, also, it's like, once you get to be an adult, and like me and you don't have like a real job per se, but I've had that <laughs> office job, and you're like, you're telling me those scientists are just locked in every day 
that yeah. some guy's just like, God, I shouldn't have gone out for Craig's 42nd on Tuesday. God, I'm ha- hung over. My girlfriend's a real bitch. My dog threw up on the floor before I went to work. Oh, God, Corona's out. <laughs> like, that totally <laughs> seems like something that could happen. You know I mean? Hell yeah. Like, yeah, those, well, now, you like, can't trust scientists to, to be her. dialed in. Yeah, but now all the people like trying to cure it are getting killed and shit. It's, it's wild. Well, this is, I mean, this is the scary thing, too, because, like, you know, we were talking about maybe we'll start working June 1st. You're like, we mostly are just in my office or at a baseball field with the two of us. So, like, you know, we yeah. would probably be pretty responsible. We'll be all right, yeah. But, like, this is what I was talking about with my father-in-law, right? Because he was kind of – he's one of these, like – he works at the post office. So his theory is, man, I'm fucking dealing with nonsense all day, every day. We sure. got to get back to work because the economy and the country is going to get destroyed. And I was like, you know, I totally – this is the weird thing. Is like normally when you have these debates, you're like, all right, Griffey, you're a liberal. You're usually over here and other people over here. This one, I'm like, I don't know. I don't yeah. fucking know. Because I was yeah. telling you, like, Miller, right, our friend Chucky – he owns a bar, and the government said, hey, good job building this business. P.S., you can't make any money for X amount of time. Yeah. And if the government doesn't step in to fill that breach, how is that? I mean, I understand it's a responsible thing to do, and we right. live in a society not to infect people, but to just say, hey, no more money for you. P.S., you also have to pay bills. <laughs> like, Yeah. Well, that's, it, it's just yeah, a that's big the problem. Like, they shut everything down, and they tell you you can't do it. Like That shouldn't give them license to shut your business down, too. Right. Like permanently there, there should be some some recourse in that for and that, sure and that's the thing right so i'm on that but then also when i see uh angry white people with machine guns saying they need haircuts and to go to la fitness a small part of me hopes that they are in a grave yeah like maybe not even that small but i'm just like i want coronavirus to start being more picky you know what i mean like choose your targets more effectively (laughs) like if you're because i saw that thing in florida where people are just like we need to get in the gym and they're doing squats and push-ups outside (laughs) and one you're like most of you look like you have not been doing this through quarantine also you're exercising outside like fuck off and so if those people were to disappear well that's i'm okay with that that's the best protest is like they're because they're like we got to be able to work out but they're actually doing what they're protesting. Yeah. You like, are literally look, just... Oh, goddamn, look at that. You can do it. You can still do it. Yeah, also, it's like, hey, I can just tell from the helicopter shot there aren't a lot of Mr. Olympias down there. You yeah. don't need the 500 bench. <laughs> it's, like, it's like me walking down, like, holding a beer and protesting that the bars are closed. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I need to drink. Or me <laughs> standing outside of a donut store saying, I need to carb load more. <laughs> like, we get it. You've already achieved your goal. <laughs> no, it's, I, but that's what I mean. So, like, I understand... But also, I'm re- like people who are protesting at a state house with machine guns. Yeah. It's like, what are you gonna? You're gonna shoot the fucking virus? Oh no! You just want to tell this lady governor you're gonna <laughs> shoot her? Like, but you know you're not gonna shoot her because the moment you shoot her, you guys all get fucked up, and then you're we want to walk around in, in public at a subway with a bazooka because we're not confident enough in our <laughs> ability to give someone else an <laughs> orgasm. That party ends. <laughs> The moment those people, and I don't care how white you are, the moment you walk into a state house and start murdering governors, that party's over. That party's yeah. going to stop in a big way. <laughs> so, so it's like I just see all these dumb fucks, and I'm like, all right. And also, maybe I'm biased. Like, I'm the last person on earth that you should bring your I need a haircut conversation to. <laughs> but, but you know, like, just sitting in the na- neighbor's driveway, it's like, man, like, and I'm pretty isolated a lot of times. Like I'm not out and about very yeah. often. And I was just like, man, I, I'm, I miss it. And you do want things to get back. And here's the other problem. I don't know what you're thinking about this, but I was like, dude, I've seen that that shit's mutated in India. They don't know how many strands there are of it now. So even if we make vaccines, blah, blah, I think this thing's just going to be here. Like, I don't think yeah. there's going to be a, Hey, we defeated it. And it's fucking gone moment. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, eventually, yeah. You're not going to eradicate it. It is. It's just yeah. kind of is what it is. So you point. have to start coming back. But I, I mean, I'm not fucking smart enough to figure out how to do all this. Like, yeah, me get out of here. Me man. Neither, man. Yeah. I, I mean, that's what I told my wife. I'm like, if I could just like get beer when I need it and my kids can play outside, like that's that's good for me for now. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Because <laughs> I was like, could you even imagine going to like an IU basketball game? Yeah. Because that's what I was telling my father-in-law, right? Because he was like this, you know, this better be back before college basketball. I was like, wow, okay, that's wildly important, right? But, I would never pay for those tickets anyway. Cause it's well, I, sure, yeah. I, I mean, obviously. I mean, I'll I, mean to, I love I'll a good 52-32 to, to 32 but... game. <laughs> but, but think of it this way. This is how I've been thinking about the disease lately, right? Because one of the things I keep hearing people say, like my Republican neighbor, 
It's like, oh, well, we're not testing enough, so so many people have it that, you know, death rate is probably pretty low, right? Because Indiana's is up to, like, 5 or 6%, but people think it's way low. Fine, whatever. So I was like, let's say you're in a stadium with 100,000 people at WrestleMania, right? And 1% of the people in that stadium are a dead body. Yeah. That would be the most shocking thing that you've ever been a part of. And then I was like, imagine it's not a disease, but, you know, a true crime style, like, Iranian terrorist. (laughs) What do you think we'd be doing? Like, every Iranian on Earth would be exploded already, right? Like, if if this had been (laughs) Iranians and Trump... If there are 88,000 dead Americans because of Iranians, Trump would have, like, leveled the entire Middle yeah. East by now. So it's like, I, I just think we all have these really weird disconnects in our head right now. Yeah. And again, I, I think everyone's right. Everyone's right at the same time. Yeah, yeah like, it's, everybody's got some kind of merit to, to whatever, you know, to a side of it. Because nobody yeah. knows. Nobody nobody knows. We've never done this before. You no. know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's it, but that's the thing. Because it started off like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Now it's a big deal. And people are like, oh, it's like the flu. You're like, oh, it's way worse than the flu. Uh, but also summer, so fuck you. <laughs> it's like, you know? and, and yeah, I mean, this is the thing. We don't know how bad this is going to be for the economy. Yeah. So, like, who knows you, what's coming down the road? Yeah, the scariest part of the uh, of uh, this whole thing for me, um, a couple of weeks ago, my dog, so Ryan and uh, Chucky and, uh, and his girlfriend had some um, – uh, edibles, uh, <laughs> stuff in it. And they must've, they must've dropped a piece or something, but, but Rhonda, my dog got a, got a bite of, of one of it somehow. Oh, no. And she weighs and, like eight and, pounds. Uh, I didn't know, like nobody knew. <laughs> she, like I said, somebody must like a, a crumble must've fallen on it. Cause she's like, she's only nine pounds. So it doesn't take a lot. You know what Jesus I mean? Like Christ. one small bite would, 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 would do it. And, uh, so she was, she was laying on the couch with me and she wouldn't move. And so, like, I tried all the old tricks to get her to move because I thought maybe she was just tired. And I was like, you want to get a treat? You want to go for a car ride? And she just looked at me. <laughs> she was just like, no. For the first time in her life was just like, no. And I was like, I think Rhonda's fucked up. Like, I think she's high or something. <laughs> like, you know, I've never seen it. Well, then, Dude. so I put her down on the ground and she couldn't walk. Like, her arms went fully stiff and she couldn't walk and she was, like, falling over. <laughs> and so, so I, like, started feeling really bad and I was like, shit. So I got her up on the couch and like, I was, you know, just like overly loving her. And then it, it turned into where she was like hallucinating. Like she was seeing shit and she would like start doing, you know? And so like, I really started to, I was trying not to laugh cause I was actually kind of scared. So like I Googled it, you know, the, the effects of marijuana on dogs and, you know, <laughs> and it was like, you know, it can potentially be deadly because their bodies, they metabolize it differently than humans do. Oh, so like it. enough of it can be like poison to them. So I was like really freaking out. So I called a bet. I called an emergency bet and they were like, it's going to be fine. If she starts losing control of her bowels or anything, then you have like a real problem. But if she's just lethargic and shit, she's, she's going to be okay. So, so I took her to bed and she sleeps under the blankets. <clears throat> and, uh, so, so I get her laid down under the blanket and I think she's like finally calm. And apparently she started seeing stuff again because like every few minutes she'd be laying there still and then she would just jump straight headfirst into the wall. Like <laughs> out of the know what she was seeing. So I, so I picked her up. After she did this like three times, I picked her up. I brought her to the couch and I just slept on the couch because I was like, at least if she's going to jump out, she'll hit like a padded couch wall <laughs> instead of like my hard drywall. You know oh, I mean? dude. Yeah, and she's going to snap her neck and be like a dog hawking. What's that? She would snap her neck and be a dog Hawkins. Yeah. Can't have that. yeah. It took her all of 16 hours before she was like 16 fully, hours. Only normal again, dude. It was wild. So now like, cause I don't, I, you know, I don't really do that kind of stuff and I don't care that other people do, but it, like Ryan was like, he moved it. It's like basically on the roof now. Like nothing is within any reach. Of any <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Poor Rhonda. Now yeah. that happened to uh, my buddy's dog once. Uh, my buddy had this dog named Blaze, and he had, like, one of those weird L.A. houses where it was, like, him, his roommate, his roommate's mom. It was, like, kind of a drug addict because she had back surgery. So, like, just crazy shit happening all the time, people in and out. Well, she she did the same thing. She left her, like, weed yeah. cookies on the table. Blaze jumped up and oh, ate shit. all of them, like, in the neighborhood of three to six, right? She couldn't remember because she was on her pills now. 
And Blaze was just like, because I brought my dog over to have a play date. And he's just like, <laughs> I was like, uh, I don't know if yeah. that's okay, dude. Like, it got to the point I was like, we got to put the hose down her throat, crank that shit to full volume, and we'll flush her out. He's like, is that okay? And I, I had been drinking. I was like, I, I think that would work. It's just water. I think that sounded too hard. Yeah. But I was like, <laughs> I know. Everyone's all on Tiger King. I'm like, they should just start filming people trying to fix their dogs in quarantine. <laughs> Get some weird, weird fucking content. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, have you been watching the Jordan doc? Hell yeah, I have. Oh, my Hell God. Hell yeah, I have. Well, they're about to get to the the Pacers one, so I knew you'd be yeah. excited for the next yeah, one. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was super disappointed at the end of the last one because they, like, started to talk about it, and then they just rolled credits, and I was like, no. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the one. I know. It's been a great period for documentaries. I feel like I've watched yeah. like a couple really good. I started that one you told me about, the Gabriel Fernandez one. Yeah. I didn't rough. even make it the whole first episode. It's rough. Well, I turned that shit off because I don't know about you, but documentaries are getting to this point now where some of them just feel like, man, am I just going to watch them talk about this kid that got tortured and murdered? And like, we're not going to learn or do anything. Is Are we just sitting here getting like a weird tragedy boner? Meanwhile, they're showing me pictures of this little kid, and I was like, oh, man, yeah. this one's too brutal. I couldn't. But I did uh, Tiger it's King rough. and McMillions and yeah. uh, now the Jordan one. But the Jordan one is way better than the other ones. Like, It's really good. By yeah, a yeah. lot. I don't it's know, really man. I, I like it, too, because I think this is the – this is the because it feels like they're making it specifically to be like, hey, all you people that say LeBron's better, fuck off forever. <laughs> Like it feels well, like such a pointed attack at the case. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's 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 actually really cool to hear him talk about his like his mentality too, because like you hear all the cliches about like these hyper achievers and these, mm -hmm. you know, like the Kobe's and the Jordans and all these guys that just like they win and they just have this. And it's like the cliche like you know hard work pays off and all that. Like, but it's it's different than that. And like you can hear him talking about it and the way he says it and the way he articulates it. It's something it's something different inside of him. Yeah. Then, then you know what I mean, and that, that that part to me has been pretty cool. That and how much like how much he might not have won if people didn't accidentally piss him off. <laughs> <laughs> if everyone was just giving him like screen, chocolates every looking day for fuel, <laughs> and, like, but then he'd probably be like, "These motherfuckers are so nice to me. They think yeah. I'm dumb." <laughs> or something like, like, yeah, like I, the one where he's like, he's like, I said hi to George Carl, and he goes, he's like, I don't know if you heard me or not, but he didn't say hi back. <laughs> So that pissed me off enough to just like win. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm gonna go Bruce win. Carl the said hi. Like maybe the Sonics would have beat the fucking Bulls. <laughs> yeah. Oh my! All well, that's that's definitely been the clip of Jordan. the show. Yeah, it was uh, Gary Payton like I had him, and Jordan <laughs> just laughs like that is the greatest moment in the history of all entertainment ever. Yeah. Oh my! Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, no, you're right though. The thing that stuck out to me is as like cause that's that there there. It's always the the thing, right? That. Even those of us that concede, LeBron is probably the second best player of all time easily. Yeah. And he's like, you know, close, depending on what you want. I think this documentary is just saying enough of that. Jordan is on a the best of the best. Every other guy who's a Hall of Famer in that era just knew they were fucking done, right? Yeah. And, you know, you hear about And I remember living through it and kind of hating the Bulls. I'm like, enough of the winning. I love that Magic team. That was my fucking first uh, sports team I adored, right? Yeah. But you just watch, and it, it is just the ability to, because that's what struck me, right, is that the pursuit to win the first one makes sense, right? I got to right. do it. I got to do it. I've never done it, never done it. But the way that he constantly could keep at that level yeah, after renewed, all the success is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Like, to maintain being that guy for that long, that's the part that I think always eludes me about Jordan's greatness right because i mean you always see like you saw the warriors they won their you know they could have won three or four in a row if they hadn't lost that cleveland one but you yeah. saw like by the end they're just fucking around they're throwing bad passes like constant yeah. turnovers so, like we're good enough we'll just win right you know they were just lackadaisical and you just never saw that no and i think that's even more impressive than just getting to the the top once yeah well i, I got into an argument well not an argument me and my buddy were debating last night and because he was taught because Reggie said Reggie Miller said we were the better team. On that <laughs> team. Yeah. But, you know, the, like, I mean, maybe in, in all actuality, that Pacers team was really good. And I've actually heard some Bulls people say I've never said that they were the better team, but that they were probably the toughest team they faced of the championship runs. 
Well, that team was stacked because you're starting. You had the Davis brothers, Smiths, Mark Jackson, yeah. Reggie. I can't remember what your bench looked like, but that team was good. Oh, yeah, and Mark, uh, Mark Jackson was back on that team. And, yeah. And, but, but the argument I was having, my buddy was like, he was like, Reggie Miller's an idiot. Like, only losers say that stuff. And I was like, and I'm a, look, I'm wearing a Reggie Miller t shirt. Right. I'm, I'm biased. I'm a fucking Reggie apologist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but like, my point was that the difference between Reggie and Jordan, or the difference between six championships and no championships is like, if Reggie had won three championships, say, or two, he wouldn't be saying, you know, we were probably the better team then. Mm-hmm. But, Reggie's a Hall of Famer, and I fucking love Reggie. Yeah. But all he has his hat to all he has to hang his hat on is all the what if moments and all the almost wins that right. he had. So of course, he's gonna say something like, you know what I mean? Whereas but that, Jordan, how many goes, guys yeah, did yeah. he do that to? Because that was another interesting part of the doc was the Charles Barkley shit. Because yeah. now you even see on TNT, Shaq even said people question why you're a Hall of Famer, Chuck, and you're like. Actually, Shaq, he might have been as good or better than you, right? Like, if you weren't 7'2 yeah. and 500 pounds. He was a, he was a pounds, monster. Yeah. He was un- I, I, That's the fun part for me is you get old and you go away, and basketball today doesn't even look the same as basketball back then. No. And so to actually really sit and spend time watching, like, oh, my God, I remember when I was a kid buying the Charles Barkley versus Godzilla comic book. Like, he was yeah. amazing. Yeah. He was an ordeal, <laughs> right? And that Suns team, and that's another thing. Barkley's like, we were probably the better team. But Michael that's Jordan just said, fucking, you're not here. You're not on yeah. my level. Yeah. And, that's, and it didn't matter. Like, oh, man. That's how, that's, that's how, how strong that, that like, Pat, that will to win that, or that, the hatred for losing. Yeah. Is like, Jordan didn't love to win as much as he hated to lose. Yeah. Like, my buddy talks about that a lot. Uh, but, like, and that's, that's like the difference is, these teams didn't have anybody like that. Like your team yeah. might have been better, but Jordan was still gonna fucking find a way to beat you because he he couldn't stand to lose that much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like imagine would would any team that Michael Jordan took to a finals take away talent? Would they have dropped that series to Dirk and the Mavs? Impossible. No. No. Especially when they were putting JJ Berea on LeBron <laughs> and he didn't get a bucket every time. Like that's just that's the difference. <laughs> And, I mean, LeBron yeah. ascended after that. But you're like, that team was stacked. So, don't give me that. Yeah. Miami, he didn't have enough. And that's – I think that's the other fun – the two things that you can see they're really attacking, right? Which is LeBron is better because he makes his teammates better. And this documentary is saying you're only basing that on assist numbers. But yeah. that's not how basketball works. This is fucking yeah. horse shit. Because yeah. all of those guys that won rings would not have had rings except for – Michael Jordan, right? Like Scottie Pippen not going into that game because he was mad he didn't get the shot. You know who never had to ask to have the play drawn up for him? Michael Jordan because he was the fucking man. (laughs) And that was the difference between him and Pippen. Pippen wasn't just the give me the ball and I'll make this happen guy, right? And and Rodman came on and Rodman is – that's the other fun one is people are like, stop saying that (laughs) Draymond Green is Rodman and Barkley. Disgusting, (laughs) right? With his triple singles as Chuck says. (laughs) But it's like what they're really doing is making a great case that Michael Jordan took all the attention and through the triangle, he was actually a good teammate and helped other players get a lot better. And then on top of that, everyone's like, well, LeBron's a way better defender. And this documentary is saying, is he? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, those scenes of Michael Jordan, you're like, he's a fucking shark out there. Yeah, yeah. He just he wanted to kill everybody. Like, well, that's the difference between like. LeBron making his teammates better because he gets a lot of assists. Yeah. And a lot of times he's just trying to run those assist numbers up and it's sure. garbage time assists. <laughs> Jordan just threatened to kill everybody in practice. Yeah. If, if they didn't get, <laughs> that's how he made his teammates better. Like if you don't work hard, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. And to me, that's a more effective way. Yeah. It's Michael a, Jordan, would, <laughs> Michael Jordan you know, like, would have just fist fought Kevin Love. Whereas yeah. LeBron's like, I'm off to Taco Tuesday. Be ready for an ambiguous tweet later. You know, that's the yeah. difference. <laughs> Jordan Jordan would kill Kawhi Leonard for like load management. Like he would have just yeah. he would have been in his ass for that. That that's the one because they did the Jordans like someone paid their hard earned money to come see me, and I'm like, yeah, uh, all right. It's true though. Like I mean, I get, but again, I I think load management. I mean, 
Yeah, I'm with load management. Actually, I, I, that doesn't bother me that much. My whole life is load management. Yeah, I don't know why. I, I don't know why I hate it so much. I, I, I hate, think I hate it because it just plays into this narrative that today's players are pussies, which I don't think they are. And I don't think the 90s bass are like you watch those series with the Pistons and you're like, it's lucky Michael Jordan didn't break his leg and we lost this greatest player of all time. Like, yeah. that's not basketball. That's horse shit. Isaiah Thomas can suck a dick, even though he's from <laughs> IU. And I appreciate that. He, he is a little bitch and he deserved to not be on the dream team for being a fucking bitch. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, he's getting he's getting shit on, man. I love it. He should. Yeah. yeah OK, we know you're a good player, but when he snuck out of there and he's like, well, that's just what we did. And he like. That little creepy yeah. walk. I'm yeah, like, that's you. He that's being like a bitch. He didn't want his face. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't want his face seen. And also, you can't call yourself the bad boys when you finally get fucking punched in the mouth. You run away like a little bitch. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> if you're going to walk out like that, fine. But look him in the eyes while you do it. Don't yeah. be a fucking coward about it. Shake his hand and say, next time, bitch. I'll yeah. get you next year. Don't. Yeah. Look him in the eyes while you walk past him. Don't hide the behind these fucking Bill Lambeers yeah. and all these guys. No. That's <laughs> horse shit. Dude, I had a I had a Nintendo game way back in the day for regular Nintendo. And it was called <laughs> it was uh, Bill Lambeer's Combat Basketball. I don't know if you remember. What? It. But yeah, it was a real game. Is that, I'm Basically, googling that right like, now. Is that a real thing? Yeah, dude. And you were just like robots that played basketball, and you could just like beat the hell out of people and shoot oh them with my bombs. God. It. it was yeah, it was it was an amazing game. You can buy this for six bucks. It's a Super Nintendo cartridge. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, incredible. it looks like it's Bill Lambeer and like Tron outfit dunking on other white guys. Yeah. Well, yeah. that I would just buy it just to have that cartridge on my desk. Well, like the <laughs> final score, the final scores of the game would be like four to three because you, <laughs> you would just be murdering people the whole time. The ball never went in the actual hoop. It was, it was great. like backyard football scores. <laughs> we got five. We win. PBJ time. <laughs> it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. Oh my god. Yeah. I I don't know, man. The Michael Jordan thing has been a fucking revelation to me it really has it's been pretty well done yeah uh, and I you're just it. like i i think this has to just be the final like you can't make the argument that lebron is the goat anymore no i don't think so and i also while i was watching i, I looked up a great point. stat right or maybe they showed it on the thing so i googled it and lebron in the playoffs has had more of his teammates score more than 20 points way more often than jordan ever had sure. so it's like lebron has also had i don't know like I said, I'm not one of those guys that thinks I need to shit on LeBron to make Michael Jordan great. I think Michael Jordan just makes the case for himself. Yeah, agreed. But, agreed. Yeah, man. You know what's crazy about LeBron. that shit? Yeah, right. LeBron yeah. just, he makes it easy. But I really like him as a guy. Like, I think he's a good good person. Yeah. It's just his on-court persona is obnoxious. Yeah. But anyway, you know what I, this was the thing about Last Dance too that was insane to me. I did not remember his dad was killed. Yeah, I, I thought his dad just had like a heart attack. No, no, no yeah, I, I remember that. That's I, I did remember that. No, because like I remember seeing Space Jam, and it's like the dad at the start, like, "Oh, you're getting really good, son." And I was like, well, I remember, "It was natural like, causes." I remember hearing like the rumors about like it was probably over Jordan's gambling debts and all that shit. And it, well, I mean, it wasn't. It's just an yeah, asinine okay. thing. But yeah, and well, that that was what was crazy about that was like all of those rumors swirl because Jordan was basically the most famous person in the yeah. world. It was like him and Michael Jackson at oh, the time. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But like, and all those rumors still circulate. Like, can you imagine if they had Twitter? Oh my in God. In 93 with that. Well, dude, you know Jordan I mean? Twitter. Like, that yeah. would have been the best. Well, that yeah. was because I remember once my dad and uh, uncle, uncle Terry and my dad, they went golfing down in Florida when we went on vacation there and they rolled up to the tee box and there were these two fucking guys sitting there and they're like what's these dudes problems like you know hit the balls move on they rolled <laughs> up and it was Jordan and Barkley holy shit and so my dad's like what and they they're sitting there playing and they're like hey you guys want to want to play this you know play with us right like they were picked him up on like the 6th i think yeah and something like that and they're like hey do you guys want to play and he, they're like yeah of course and i think <laughs> my uncle my dad actually laughs my uncle Terry's like who are these guys <laughs> <laughs> right my uncle terry to fill you in not like necessarily a sports bro or whatever but yeah. so my dad was like yeah yeah let's play and they i can't remember the number but it was somewhere between like one and five grand a hole and my dad's Jeez. like i work at a subaru plant like <laughs> we already blew our load to drive to florida uh thanks but no thanks guys <laughs> you know but i just told my dad i was like you sucker you should have like sold the minivan for one hole like fuck it dude <laughs> 
I remember my buddy telling me about one time he was at um he was at the mall in Indianapolis and this is while Jordan was still on the Bulls, but he was it was like Circle Center Mall or something and whatever it was at the time. But Jordan came into the mall and they just started fucking roping off all the stores and like any stores that he wanted to go into, they herded the people out and then like blocked them off so he could get in and out of the stores without just getting absolutely killed. And I was just like, can you imagine no. that full of fame? Like, well, no, that's and that's because we yeah. do we work in this field where like you make entertainment, you want more people to know who you are so you can, you know, get your shit out there. But then I was like, man, watching that. And that's the thing. No one. I mean, how many people have ever been Michael Jordan famous? Like that aren't Not, presidents and shit. You know, what I, like, I mean, God, you're talking about 15 people. Yeah. And it's like that just looks fucking unbearable. Well, and that's what's crazy about like and, and and this isn't like this isn't anything to do with the Jordan versus LeBron because LeBron's probably that famous now. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know yeah. What I mean, he, I mean, he just is. But, like, back then, without all of the social media, without all of that, like, the, the people like the Michael Jacksons, the Madonna, Michael yeah. Jordan, like, have reached that level of fame was even harder. And, like, yeah. it depended on everybody else making you famous instead of, like, you posting all your stuff to, to Instagram or – you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that was, like, a whole different level of fame to me. Yeah, because, I mean, you could have – one company's like, we're going to push our one star. So maybe there's more of a push behind the corporation, but like, you can't get into my dad's house. You know what I mean? Unless like you're a big, big name. Like my dad wasn't, it's not like you can target people on Facebook and shit. I don't know, man. Yeah. This documentary has been like just the cigar smoking, like everything about it. The, the, the Pippin moment was huge to me. I love what it he was, was really he, interesting. We talked about going into the cocaine party and the, uh, in the hotel, and he yeah. totally just like bitched out. He was like, "You get, I'm getting out of here." Yeah. Well, no, I, I read that the guys were like really mad at him for saying that. Yeah. And I was like, "Hey, be Michael Jordan and get your own documentary well, to refute like, it." He, he didn't name drop, but he was like pretty much everybody else on the team. So it's like <laughs> he's okay, like I'll maybe ten other quick. Chicago Bulls. Yeah. I don't know. Like that's that's the same as name dropping. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Don't go down okay. to the Tuscaloops uh, Tom Ford oh. dealership or you're going to get socked, Michael Jordan. Uh, Jordan, I didn't know you were a Mark-ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought Jordan was cool and knew how to party. He's only great at one thing. <laughs> Michael Jordan is the Charles Barkley of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> that and uh, the other one when they were like, uh, they leaked so some information leaked or whatever. And they're like, we don't know who did it. And they went back to like two Bulls players and they're like, it was Horace Grant. Yeah, right. <laughs> They just straight called him out there. Like, yeah, it was Horace Grant leaked it. Dude. Yeah. And well, then those he was guys like, had I didn't do balls. Shit. <laughs> Could you imagine being the guy who covered the Bulls and wrote that book about Jordan? Yeah. Like the wrath you would have to be ready. I hope he made a lot of money on that shit. Oh, he had to. You and also, Jordan yeah, Horace it. Grant being a, a fucking trick like that. I had no idea. Best Rex He was Rex actually the at the hotel I was at when I went on my honeymoon. Horace yeah. Grant was there, and I had a way too fruity tropical beverage with him. <laughs> and I even told him, I was like, God damn it. I'm so mad. I don't have my rec specs with me. I wear them during softball <laughs> because of you. Like when they put his rec specs on the water tower at Disney, I was like, that's one of my top five sports moments. It's incredible. I know. And what? I was like, what the fuck are the chances you're here and not your brother? Like whatever. Like, that's like, Horace like, Grant. <laughs> like, I don't get like, I don't, I don't want, I don't reach for autographs often, but like if I had a pair of signed rec specs, by Horace Grant, that'd be like the dopest fucking yeah. autograph you could get. I know. <laughs> you know Instead, I mean? now they just sit in my softball bag unused. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, like you could, ah. like, the, the, the things that I would get autographed, I would get like Rex Specs by Horace Grant, my kneecap by Nancy Kerrigan. Yeah. <laughs> you know Syringe I mean? like by that. Jose Canseco. And then, yeah. <laughs> A needle. <laughs> that for that'd sure. That would be incredible. my favorite one. <laughs> Barry Bonds with like a really small children's hat. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I would be so stoked to have – that's what we should start on the show is see if we can get athletes to give us weird – Sign the craziest like, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, I don't need you to sign a baseball card. It's already got your name on it. Sign yeah. something cool for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like, like Plexco Burst to sign like an orange prison jumpsuit or something. True, true. Yeah. <laughs> Have Tito Ortiz uh, sign like a Jenna Jameson dildo or something. <laughs> or, like, get Ray Lewis, get Ray Lewis to, autograph, to autograph a white suit. 
Yeah, or a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ray Lewis is like, here's where I put a guy. Ray Lewis, <laughs> always tackle hard. <laughs> it's like, what? Uh, uh, we got to talk about, though, too. Um, so a lot of news has been swirling. It looks like some of the leagues are on their way back. To get in there, I was uh, the MLB, the Players Association, and the owners had a meeting today, and they both sides came out and said they felt positive about – about what was discussed. So that's a step. See, I heard July discuss, no fans. Is that what you were hearing? Yeah, but they did not discuss money today. They just discussed like the how, how it would actually look structure-wise. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I read that um, the NBA had a similar thing where the Players Association, uh, Chris Paul organized a call with, you know, 15 people, something like that, like a bunch of the best players in the league. And they think they're about to come back. But the weird thing I read is that they might all live in like these enclosed little apartment buildings to keep their quarantine. Yeah. So they might have to leave their family and kids for a while. Yeah. I don't know. But I read LeBron was on the call and I was like, that makes sense because he's at home watching the last dance. And he's like, I got to get one more fucking championship, dude. I got to get more. (laughs) So I'm old as fuck. (laughs) He's like, I'm going to fucking sneak out. He's like, it sucks. And Kawhi's kneecaps are probably super strong now. (laughs) <laughs> oh, his load management is off the charts right now oh yeah Kawhi's just he's like I would jerk off but then I would be using up too much of my load <laughs> here's the thing though like if the season started tomorrow Ka- Kawhi would play and then take the next two games off he'd be like <laughs> I gotta <laughs> yeah god I need two more days of stretching that was a really yeah, saw, shocking I game minutes last night. <laughs> you guys triggered my meniscus I need, I need a break <laughs> yeah I don't I mean the NBA I'm like Whoever wins the title, I'm like, this is going to be an asterisk title anyways. Yeah. So, like, LeBron and AD win it. It's not going to help him in his Jordan debate. Yeah. You're like, it'll be cool. I mean, it is hard because everyone's, like, jonesing for sports to be back. You're like, I illegally watched the UFC on Twitter this weekend. That was fun. Yeah. You're like, I'm not spending CBO. $65 in quarantine to fucking buy pay-per-views. <laughs> yeah. But- I've been watching the Korean baseball. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, even know dude, that shit was still I, going on. Dude, it's fucking awesome because, like – all they do is bat flip. Like these oh, motherfuckers, yeah, they bat flip on like doubles in the gap. <laughs> they, they As don't you give should. A fuck, dude, and I love it. Like it's, it's really feeding my soul. Plus it's like I started gambling on it uh, last night or the couple of nights ago <laughs> and I don't know anything about it. So I just been throwing these like ridiculous parlays together and I hit two of them last night. <laughs> so, no, yeah. I made money on Justin Gaethje beating Tony Ferguson. I just had it. Like, I saw Gaethje, and I was like, that guy never has his mouth closed. Yeah. So I was like, that means he's probably real dumb and real tough. So I was like, and I've seen him fight, so I should base it on, like, skill and stuff. But I was like, he kind of has that Roethlisberger. You're like, yeah, I bet he could have a motorcycle accident, no helmet, and walk away. Like, he he just (laughs) looks like that dumb guy who's going to be tough. Well, they were talking about it. Like, the the league actually, like, tells the players – to bat flip and like over That's like amazing. overdo celebrate because they're like the fans love that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they think it's badass. And, and they like, have dude, netting that's, everywhere. That's smart as hell. Like they don't, they don't have any unwritten bullshit rules. No. We're like, you know what I mean? They're just like, yeah, do it. You're telling me there's no Korean Brian McCann's to yeah. shut the fun down. <laughs> dude, the, pitch, the pitchers get a big strikeout and they just fucking like, I mean, they give it right back to the batters. It's oh, great. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's my favorite dude. They should. I mean, I've seen some YouTube clips. What I did, uh, the sports I've been watching, I did a lot of sports documentaries. I started Ken Burns baseball again. That's a great one. That, yeah, yeah. It's unfucking believable, dude. Yeah. But then um what I did is I went on this deep, deep dive of the uh, slapping championships. <laughs> yeah. it, it like hits right in that sweet spot. Like I know we had like when we were living together in LA, we had that like really weird period where we were obsessed with arm wrestling. Arm wrestling. Yeah. Like big time. Travis Bajant represent. <laughs> You know what I mean? We had like a big, big phase into arm wrestling. I was like, this is so close to that. The characters aren't as good, but the ones you see are wild. And it's just, and I still don't know what the rules are because I've seen four of them where they call him like Russian Thanos, right? Yeah. Where he's like this big, fat white guy. And you probably saw the one clip where he smacked the fuck out of the guy and like made him unconscious, right? <laughs> well, I went and found videos. They post his training on YouTube. And it's like him like smacking watermelons in half and shit. (laughs) Hell yeah. And I was like, this is great. But then I've also seen him lose multiple matches where no one gets like, they'll just smack each other six times and they both start cheering and the match is over. (laughs) And I can't find like commentators to tell me what happened. I'm like, 
do they both win if no one goes down? Like, but it's just like watching these guys smack the fuck out of each other and not to sound too hyperbolic, Incredible. but I'm like, this is better than the average UFC fight. <laughs> like, it's just like, just cut the nonsense out. Cause there's no dancing around. I mean, you're just, yeah. you're getting hit and you're hitting, you know what and I mean? It, yeah. And every time they hit, you just go, Oh, and you're like asshole puckers. And you're like, it's a visceral experience to just watch these smacks. But yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I spent a good, like my wife was home. So she's like, we're going to go uh, like on a bike ride and walk. I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, coffee. I'm good. <laughs> And like for four hours, just in my underwear, chugging coffee, just watching people smack each other. Well, it's funny that you brought the arm wrestling because I was like right before the right before the quarantine started, I was at the bar, and uh, I was like out on the back patio or something, and and I overheard a conversation. This guy was talking about arm wrestling, and I just turned around slowly, and I was like, "It's actually called pulling." I was like, <laughs> oh, "That's what the pros call it." And he was like seriously and we ended up having like this really long conversation about arm wrestling and i was like yeah you should totally watch pulling john john berzink he's crazy man like we just kind of was like man i still love it i'll be damned yeah <laughs> game of arms dude the best show ever travis page it man well you took you essentially did the craft beer thing that guys do at bar but about something cool yeah like the worst thing amazing. at a bar is where you're like oh have you tried this beer and some guy turns around he's like stroking a beard that looks exactly like mine uh, yes, I've tried that. That's so that's your, <laughs> <laughs> the hops ratios. And you're like, oh, God, this guy. But if someone were to interrupt you and be like, actually, here's arm wrestling facts. What? <laughs> yeah, we got way into it. It was, it was pretty awesome. Oh, I don't God. think anybody else was impressed. But... I still cannot believe we have never reached out to Travis Bajan to do the pod. He would absolutely like do it. I him a bunch back in the day. I think he lives in Pennsylvania. I should just message him and be like, hey, man, you got well, any events? It was at the height of his fame, so he was probably getting – now he would probably do it. That back then, man, he was getting three, four requests a day. You know I mean? <laughs> a year, three or four requests. <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, what? Yeah, we should Google that. What's the biggest arm wrestling pod? <laughs> it's like bring us in. Yeah. I'll bet maybe you they have en- them. Maybe we should enter that arena and dominate it. If there's <laughs> Dude, only like six, do you think we could call Beijing and be like, "Do you need the voices of arm wrestling?" <laughs> we'll do play we'll by play like- in color. <laughs> We'll be like Joe Rogan to like UFC. Like we started as like comedians, yeah, and then we and then we just learned everything about this offbeat sport, and now we're like the fucking face of it. And then I our pod a, becomes very conspiratorial. Yeah. We have Alex Jones on as a guest to talk about what he meant by "I'm going to eat my neighbors." I, I will have Alex Jones on the pod every fucking day. You know what? Says, yes, I agree because I sell people <laughs> like a lot of my liberal friends and whatever are like you can't give these people sunlight, and I was like. I disagree. I think he should be on everyone's show all the time. Yeah, because man, it shines so bright. You have yeah, to. this guy's going to be a murder, suicide, or prisoner soon. <laughs> we need to get yeah. all of this content. I, I mean, it's there is no one better on hasn't the. Hasn't happened yet. There, there is no better content on the entire internet than Alex Jones. Like it's not just a, not even yeah. that yeah. clip of him talking about. I was just <clears> looking <throat> up and down my neighbors, and I was like, my daughters aren't starving. I watched that like 10 times. I was like, what the like, fuck is going on with this guy? Clip of him on, on uh, Rogan and he's like, I'm, I'm pretty stupid. And he yeah. just like goes on talking about how dumb he is. It's amazing. But literally a week before on the show, he's like, Joe Rogan, you deep state baby eater. Do you know what I'm going to do? It's like, it's the it's everything I love about pro wrestling and yeah. arguing about things that are like seemingly real. And it's just like, it's all these like stupid things put together in this perfect messenger even yeah. though i agree he is one of the worst people that have ever lived probably like, he's a big scumbag but that doesn't mean he doesn't make great content yeah yeah <laughs> all right man we gotta we gotta wrap this thing up thank you guys for listening uh we will be back every week now uh going forward hopefully by june 1st we'll be back everything you know all the new videos ready to rock out and uh we'll see you guys then thanks for listening give us a rating and review on apple Podcasts wherever you get your podcast Bye. Bye.